The fifth level is rather interesting in its background. It's set in Bullion, Nevada, which is also sometimes called Bullionville. And in actual fact, Bullion, Nevada no longer exists. It was a mining town, as you would expect. It was basically an operation from 1870 to 1950. And there are some artifacts, including railway artifacts. This couple are sort of interesting in that they've made a bunch of web pages about ghost town tourism. And this is their Bullionville page. I note that they're also in Mensa, which is sort of interesting. And you can see the railway car and the trees there. Unfortunately, not a larger photo. Be nice if it were. And they have some of the mining artifacts and things like that. And these photos are a little bit old, but dedicated web pages sometimes are. And you can contact them there. Ghost Town Seekers, that's what they call themselves. The Winds, that's their family name. And utahrails.net also has a site on it, even though Bullion is in Nevada and not Utah. The reason is that the railways that served Bullionville went into Utah. And actually, the tracks weren't pulled up, allegedly, until 1985. Union Pacific maintained a line into Bullionville to 1985, supposedly. I have never been there myself. And in this scenario, in this level, you actually don't do any mining, surprisingly enough, except for, apparently, there's one... Actually, there's one mine there, but most of it is oil and lumber. And they give you two oil tankers, even though you only have one oil well. They've improvised a little bit, as with the other levels, to give you some variety. It actually took me a while to get through this level. I've actually had to split this into two playthroughs. This one, which is around 10 minutes, and then an additional two-some-odd for the next part. And then for the sake of order, I jump straight to part seven from there. And so much of this is just a slog through switching moves, essentially, although you don't split up the train, obviously. Switching moves in the sense that you're just kind of inching the train around town for pickups, deliveries, pickups, deliveries. And no real proper highballing. There's actually a speed limiter on the train, this train, that prevents you from going more than six miles an hour in reverse. So sometimes getting turned around is actually worth it. Because even if you're not going to be blasting along, you can go like 20. As opposed to six. Well, it does make a difference.
There's the low on coal warning again, and once again it's going to automatically reload any minute. This level took me a while, and of course as the levels progress, they deliberately make them more difficult, of course. It's difficult to make the deliveries fast enough as you progress to actually get the track out built. The only commodity on this level that's easy to handle, of course, is the oil, because you have two oil tankers. And your oil well is right there on the main line, if you can call it that. So, no switching necessary. And so is the refinery. And this is part of the reason why I had to split this part of the playthrough into two parts. Because it took me a good 12 some odd minutes to complete this. Here I skipped the oil to play a little bit of catch-up because I realized that things were just not going as fast as I wanted them to and that I couldn't get a full load of oil as you can see there not even one car load even after waiting it was less than a car load like what I was saying in an earlier playthrough that some of the producers will produce slower than others and obviously if you empty them out really fast if you come back too soon they won't have anything to give you and the end users will also from time to time have a surplus and will be unable to take a full load So there are many ways to shoot yourself in the foot in this game, actually. Although, as I said, once you get the hang of it, I would not say that this game is extremely hard. It's certainly nowhere near as hard as Railroad Tycoon and a number of other games like that. See, I didn't even get a full load of oil from the mine there. The mines... Certainly not in surplus. Huh. Even less of a carload from the logging camp there. Now we go to the sawmill again unload And I'm almost done. I'm going to have to switch videos here. So see you in a bit.